Hello and welcome back to Angie B Crafts. So today I'm just going to do a quick card topper using two different bases. I'm going to use black card and I'm going to use craft card and I'm going to do exactly the same technique on both just to show you the difference. So first things first I'm going to use this stencil which is an all and create stencil and I just think it's really pretty and you can use whichever bit of it you like. In fact what I'm thinking I might do with this one is just use it on one side. Just decide which side to use. I think I prefer that way around. So I'm going to use it that way. I'm going to use Cosmic Shimmer Structure Paste because I'm noticing that this is starting to get a little bit thick and I don't want to waste it and plus I really do like it. What you find with your products is if you don't use them they do tend to thicken up and you do tend to not then be able to use them. A good example of that for me was I had the Diane Reevely um, paints in their popped format which was the original way they were brought out and I absolutely loved them. But I loved them so much I didn't use them enough and as a result they dried out um, and unfortunately it meant for Diane that not me personally but the fact that a lot of people did the same thing didn't use them when they had the, them fresh and they dried out and it was blamed on the um, pots whereas in actual fact it was just I admit it was me not looking after them the way I should have done so I'm just going to take that out over the edge a little bit so that we know that there is a distinctive edge I'm wanting it a little bit messy on the edges because that's what I do I do messy you can choose to do pristine I just choose not to I haven't got the patience or the inclination to do pristine so I do perfectly imperfect so there's quite a lot left on there so I'm just going to pop it back in the pot and then just take it further down in the pot so it doesn't dry and then lift this off da, da, da. so you can see we've got quite a good image there it's quite crisp but we have gone over the edges so I'm just going to clean along the edges there we go and I'm going to pop that just out of the way a minute while I do the next one so I'm just checking here to see if it has gone through to the layer underneath and it has a little bit which means we're going to get a mess on the next sheet she says putting her stencil straight on top of the next piece so I'm just going to clean off my mat a little bit so I'm just using water and a raggy. My raggies are literally just old tea towels that have been used for crafting for quite some time. This one's a clean one, it just doesn't look it, but it is. So I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to use, so you can see, you know for sure that it's mucky because it's going onto the card. I'm just going to use the reverse side of that. I'm not worried about getting it mucky. Because unfortunately, I'm not someone who's very neat and clean and tidy when I craft. I just make a mess and everything gets everything on it. What I do. So I'm cleaning this off just so that I get a decent image on the other ones. So if you have any bits left underneath your stencil from a previous um, use, it can be troublesome to get a clean, as clean an image. So it's up to you if you want it to be particularly clean, then do this in between. As you can see, I'm not really very good at cleaning stencils on a regular basis. I'm just going to flip that. You'll see there's a slight difference in tone, but I actually quite like both sides, so I'm quite happy to use that. Bear in mind this is a topper, so it's going to be going onto a card. I'm going to use it that way around on this one. So it's the same stencil. Oh, should I use it that way? Oh, I quite like. Yeah, I think I quite like that. Well, what about oh, that one? So it's the same stencil, which is what I said I was going to do. Use the same stencil for both. So yeah, what I would say about your products is use them. Don't feel, oh, I can't use that. I'm terrible when it comes to papers as well. I've got Graphics 45 papers sitting perfectly pristine with maybe one or two pages taken out of them and the rest of them still sitting there happily as if they were brand new. And it's not doing me any favours. 
particularly when they're so gorgeous I don't even get to see them because I'm too busy using up other stuff so I need to start using them use your products two reasons if it's product like this it'll go off if you don't use it and the second one is what's the point of having them if you're not going to use them they're there to be used I love it when I have to buy replacement things because it means I've really enjoyed a product and I've used it to its end so you can see I'm just cleaning off the edge of the jar just to try and stop it from getting stuck up this stuff here is already quite firm and hard so it's not as easy to get off there we go right put my lid on because we don't need that anymore and then here's the reveal do, do, do. there we go pop my stencil out of the way give a quick wipe on my mat and then do the edge okay so then one of the best ways of ensuring that this is dry is to give it a blast with a heat gun so I'm going to bring the other one in as well so you can see they're very different even though it's the same stencil because I use different parts of it So the heat gun is going to initially dry the top layer and then underneath. When it's on card it's a little bit easy to get the underneath because you can flip it over and you can just dry it through the card. When it's on MDF, which I work quite a lot on, it's more difficult to dry. So you have to, to be honest, you're better off just leaving it to cure completely. But I get impatient so I quite often end up taking chunks out of various things. I'm getting a little bit better. I've got a shelf where I keep putting things, but then I go back to them. But oh, I want to play with that now. Is it ready? And prod it in things. It's not helpful. So you can see this is curling up quite a lot. And it's curling up because of the moisture that we're taking out from underneath. So if we then do the same on top, you'll see it goes flat again. So don't panic if your card starts to curl up. It's absolutely normal. You should take it out moisture the top and bottom. You may find by the end of the project if you have put a lot of fluid onto it using different inks and paints that you need to um, flatten it under some books or under your bum. You put cushion under your bum, stick it under the cushion and then sit on it. Why not? This stuff tends to dry quite quickly. It is one that I look quite like um, and it came with lava paste and I can't remember what the other paste was it came with in the initial set so I've just been looking at getting a replacement jar and that size jar is about a five or four or five pound depending where you get it from which I don't think is too bad I do wish they did it in a slightly bigger jar I'm using it quite a lot at the minute so I've got those pretty much dry not going to be perfect. I don't want to over dry them with a heat gun because I don't want them to start bubbling. For once I actually don't want bubbles. So I've decided today that I'm going to use my fabulous eye zincs from Seth Apter. So I've got them. Uh, I'm going to go with, I think I'll use these three colours and then possibly bring in this. So we've got licorice, wild rose, lavender and this one's called antique pearl the antique pearl's different from the others you can see it's actually a clear fluid and then it's got lots of mica stuff at the bottom so you need to give it a shake but what i found with this is it's really thick so you'd expect it to give you a nice gentle um layer and it's actually quite thick and it dries faster than just the plain sprays so try it out and see if you like it before you use it it's not everyone's I don't know why I'm shaking this you don't need to shake just the dye inks so I always I just love this black I could use this on everything and I don't really do black but for some reason this one just I really enjoy it I'm going to add on a little bit of water because I like the effect of it running you can see it's starting to run over and into 
the little crevices. Now add on the other colours. So you can see the, the licorice, you'd expect it to be black, but it actually comes out more purple, but not as purple as that. And then I'm going to give them a little squirt again. These are water-based and water-reactive, so you get quite a nice look with them. But you can see there's a lot of fluidity. Now if you do get, as we've got here, normally I'd just get another piece of paper and mop it up, but if you do get an edge like that, you can see there's loads and loads of fluid there. Just tip it up and put the edge gently onto a rag or a cloth or a piece of kitchen towel and it will draw the excess ink out. So I'm not wiping it, I'm not deciding what bits go out but I've drawn that edge off now so the colour goes right to the end of it. You can clearly see the um, pattern underneath. Just clean my mat up a little bit, a little bit and then give this a blast and see what I want to add on afterwards. I absolutely love the colours of this. Fabulous. I don't know if I'm going to use the pearl or not. I might. Oh, look at that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I'm wanting to add on more of the pink, I think, is as you sort of remove the liquid, your colour pales, which you'd expect. So I'm wanting to add on some more of that pink. So I'll give it a blast. Quite fancy having it here. And a little blast over here. And I'm actually not going to use water to make it run this time. I'm just going to dry it off as it is and see what different look we get. So you get obviously a much deeper colour when you've not added in the extra water. But it still shows up the texture of the paste that you've put on. I do love these. I think spraying is probably one of my favourite things to use, if not the favourite, my go-to at the minute, much more than my ink pads because they're so much easier to use, but do be warned, you need to make sure that your area is either containing nothing that you mind getting covered in ink or anything that you do mind getting covered in ink is covered over because I have had many, many incidents of things getting covered. I regularly have to pick little bits off my iPhone or off the computer or things like that. Now I'm intentionally going to add water up here even though it's the black because I don't want it to black out onto the black card but I do want to just colour that a little bit darker. So again I'm just going to bring the raggy in and soak some of this away because we don't need all that. So you just touch it to it and it just drains it off. It's very clever. I'll do the same on that end. You can see it just suck off the excess ink. I'll get rid of some of this up here as well because we know we don't need that because it's already black. Okay. That like this is a little sticky up bit now. Let's see. I'll stay put for now. So you can see in that centre bit, I'm getting some lovely mixing of the three different colours. Because I'm layering up outside of that area, but they're spraying in. And I'm quite liking the look of this now. I've just stuck my fingernail in. So that's what you have to be careful of, because it's not entirely dry and I'm still working with it. It's very easy to stick your finger through and into the paste. Okay, so that's the first one done we'll put that to one side and we'll get the other one so for this one i'm thinking if we go for a different color just let me pop my lid on that and move it out of the way and we'll go for honey which is kind of an orangey color we'll go for coffee this was the first one i ever got and i love it 
and we'll go for spring green. So I'm going to start with the green, I think. I think that's a lovely, lovely colour. A really lovely colour. So this orangey kind of colour comes, it's orangey brown. It's more orange than some of the others. And then let's just pop a little bit darker in. So you can see that's a darker tone of brown. Right, quick squirt. Not too much. But this is just the first layer, remember. Now on this, because the background is paler, and you're going to notice the colours as you spray over the background as well. And that's fine, you can just start introducing them as and when you want to. So you can see the colours just... Oh, I love the effect that these sprays have. They maintain some darkness, they get some colour. They're just beautiful. So that layer's drying off for me to add another. And I'm going to put more green in. I'm going to put some in the background as well. And then coming across. And this time I'm just going to go in with a heat gun. I'm not going to take any off. You can see you get a very distinct colouring when it's wet. And that's because the, the colour is cooled in between where the stencil's been. Beautiful. So this is feeling quite wet, you can see it's quite limp. So I'm picking it up because otherwise what's happening is I'm heating up the mat and it's it's not absorbing away. So this is going to dry quickly, lift it up. You tend to find with craft card as well that it it can go floppy quite easily. Don't know why that is, I don't know if it's to do with the mechanism of making it, I don't know how it's made. We'll get in some rather lovely colours on that. So I'm just going to give a wipe of my surface again. This will all just, I'll show you at the end, this will just come off with a bit of water at the minute. I'm just wanting to get rid of what's wet. Okay. Oh, I'm liking this. I want some more of the orangey brown, the paler brown in. A bit here. A bit here. And a little bit on that top flower. Now, bear in mind with your sprays, you always have the option of getting a paintbrush and controlling where you want the colour to go. If I want this to come more down here, you can even pick it up and add bits in like this. So you can choose what you're doing and just because it's in a spray bottle doesn't mean you have to spray it. So you can always put it into a palette and use it as if it's just a watercolour paint. That's absolutely fine. But the spraying of it is a fun way of just seeing how it ends up. Sometimes you just want to be a little bit more specific. I actually quite like how that's ended up with a, an edge on it. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's a lovely white edge, so I'm not going to do anything with that bit. And dry this off. So, this is looking quite dark. Is it the ones on black? This one looks darker because of the tones that I'm using. That's absolutely fine. So then I'm going to pick this up and dry the back of it off as well. But we're not going to just stop at this. We're obviously going to add more into it to give it more interest. I'm not remotely bothered about the curling up because once you put glue on to stick it onto your project or if you want to you can put it under something heavy as I said it's going to lie flat. I would tend to back this onto a darker coloured card, maybe black or deep brown. I could even go with green, depends on what, you, what colour you want to bring out. But the reason it buckles is because you've got so much on it that's absorbing the fluid out of it and plus we're heating it up a lot. So don't panic about getting a little bit wrinkly, it's fine. 
Right, so we're going to go back to this one, just give this a wipe because I don't want any of the greens and browns on this piece. Right, so for this one I'm going to get this. So if you remember this was clear, I've given it a bit of a shuggle and it's now gone pearlite. But I don't want to spray it because I don't want it everywhere. So what I'm going to do is just get this and put a little bit. I'm going to put it away from the brown because then I don't want to get pearlized brown. Okay. So you can see here we've got some lovely pearlized brown. So you can actually mix your colours if you want to make one of your other colours pearlescent, you can. I'm just going to use this to add little hints of shimmer. So again, this is still water-based, so it's going to be reactive with what you're putting it onto. And you can see that I'm picking up the colour as I'm doing it as well. Also thinking that down here would look nice with a little bit, just like the flower centre, a little bit pearlised. Let's see. Oh yes, I rather like that. So again it's changing the look of what you've already got. Let's give it a blast and see how it looks when it's dry. And it's worth experimenting with anything you've got and see what you can do with it. See if one thing works with another thing and if it doesn't you've learnt from it. Never be afraid to try things out. Particularly in the crafting world but in life in general. Give it a go. So to use this you've got the option as I'm going to do of using it as well. If you like fussy cutting then you could fussy cut round all these but I get impatient with fussy cutting sometimes so I'm actually going to use that as is but I'm wanting something across here and I'm wondering actually you know what once I've got if we have it that way up and we have some sort of a sentiment here we can decorate this with little pearly bits so we don't need anything else on do I want pearlescent on that I don't think I do but what I do want on it is gilding product bear with me right so I have picked up my ancient copper pebio gilding wax which is a favorite of mine and I'm just going to add it on to some of these so we're still maintaining the color because the color is down onto the card and plus the gilding wax doesn't cover the whole of it. Where else do we want it? Oh, let's go. Keep it along this edge, I think. Um, and then I think that top flower. And then I'm thinking that I might just up a little bit around the edge of the whole thing. I'm intentionally coming up and over the top just so it's not perfectly neat. So I don't know if you can see that on there. It's not being perfectly neat on the edges. I am bringing it over the top. So this is acting as another layer effectively. We're adding in a layer here, which will help with our framing. Because it's going to make this stand out from whatever we then put it onto. Quite liking where that's going. Right, let's see what happens when we pop that onto a background. So, we'll get a little bit of black card. Let's 
doesn't want to come out. There we go. So we can back that onto black card, which I think makes it stand out quite nicely. Hmm. Or we can back it onto this is a piece of scrap white. And I prefer it onto the black. We'll stick with the black. Now the way that I would back this, I'm not saying this is finished but this is ready for me to put on and I can decide what I want to do. This corner here is still quite wet so I'm just going to dry it. So I use double sided tape when I'm doing my backing and I also use um, perfect layers which is a wonderful thing. But I really have to get my last mat to show you how to use them. So in a moment I shall stop doing it and get my last mat and then return to you. Right, so I quite like that on there. Let's try the other one, see if we want them both on. See that, that just fades into itself. So let's try that on the white. That onto the white looks better, it makes it stand out more. Right, so this is why my glass mat doesn't make it onto screen very often, because it's a mess. But we're going to use it today, so here it is. And this is how I would then mount this. This is just double sided tape, whatever brand you happen to have. If you want to use wet glue, use wet glue, that's absolutely fine. And I do use wet glue a lot in projects, but I tend to use tape for when I'm mounting things. And I tend to do five pieces particularly if it's wonky like this is it's like a bit curled up or if it's going to have heavy heavy embellishments on it so take the backing off the tape which is a simple thing to do if you do find you're struggling with this just make sure you burnish the corner that you're pulling from if you go over it with your thumbnail or with the end of a pair of scissors or something you'll find it will come off quite easily right so I'm then going to stick this onto the card now I can stick it absolutely anywhere on here it doesn't matter I'm going to stick it about there work my way along get it flat okay now these perfect layers are I don't know who makes them actually I've had these for years and years and years and I do love them. They have these brilliant measurements. So basically the ruler with a steel edge and then they have these ledges and the ledges are so if you if you can see read the number the underneath ledge near that number that's the width from the steel rule to that underneath ledge. So this bit here is 5 sixteenths of an inch, this bit here is 3 sixteenths. If I turn it over, I've got a really narrow one here of 1 sixteenth, and then a wider one here of half an inch. So there's three in the set, going from 1 sixteenth all the way up to a full inch on that one. So you can choose how wide you want your edge to be, and then you just cut it off. So I'm going to go for about an eighth of an inch. I've intentionally made it too wide all the way around, so I can show you how they work. So you just put your ruler on and butt it up like so. Get your scalpel or your blade or whatever you use for cutting and just run it along. Turn it, put your ruler on top so you can put it there and then just run it along until it stops. You can't take it anywhere. I tend to use my little finger to hold the piece steady as well. And then put my root my knife to it. Don't try and do it all in one go. It may well cut in one piece, but it's worth doing several cuts that are more gentle. Because if you try and put pressure downwards as well as pulling it along, you're more likely to tear it. So I tend to do as many as it takes. And you can tell when it's cut through. 
but you now have equal size all the way around. That's actually stuck to my mat. <laughs> so you can see now I've got a perfect eighth of an inch all the way around, which is just what I wanted. And while I was rooting that out, I also found some green card, which I thought that would mount rather nicely onto. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to do exactly the same process. Get my tape, pop it on. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know these are my sticky scissors. They even have a little label on so that I know that they're sticky scissors. I do have a real scissor fetish. I must have about 12, maybe 15 pairs of scissors just in my craft room. There's another three or four in the kitchen drawer. They're all around. I think there's a couple in the utility room, one in the office. I think there's three pairs in the office as well. Scissors rock. So, peel these off and pop it on in exactly the same way. So I'm going to go slightly wider this time. I've not decided exactly where I'm going to cut. So I always make it a little bit wider. I never try and do the, these two edges and then cut the others in. I always cut all four edges. That's just personal preference. Um, I'm going to go What did I do an eighth last time? I think I'm going to go a sixteenth, so I'm just going to do a little narrow edge on this one. I was going to do wider, but I think I'm going to do narrower instead. Don't know why. Well, actually, no, I'm going to do the same, and then I can rough it up. I'm going to do it an eighteenth again, and then I can add some texture in. So I'm just going to come along, turn it round. Wipe the camera. There we go. If you have a clean mat, it's a lot easier because these bits won't stick. You can see that's actually it's just sticking to the various things that I have on my mat. So there we have quite a nice topper, rather like that. But I do want to rough it up a little bit, so to do that I'm just going to go along this edge with my scalpel. Be careful doing this, I have cut myself on several occasions. If you think you're going to cut yourself then do it with, you can get specific tools for doing it. Um, but I've been doing it like this for many, many moons. And I'm thinking now I might just pop some ink on there. So I'm not sure actually, I think I quite like it as is. Yeah, we'll leave that one as it. Finish them off in whatever way you want. You can add on some edging, you could add little bits of white or black, you could ink up the edges of the bottom layer, put them onto a card, either a black or white base, and there you go. Thank you very much for watching. Bye!